Tigers and Aggies, Saturday night, 6 o'clock kickoff from Death Valley. Is this a rivalry to you? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I remember the good old days. And I could just like, when's the last time A&M beat us? Like, sheesh. Yeah, it was it's about, changed a little bit. about 11 it's, months ago. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's changed a little bit. But look, you guys got to get to Atlanta before I even cough at A&M being even a close to a rivalry. It's like little brother, man. Little brother, you just go hang out in College Station, get bu- get your butts kicked every year, you know, celebrate, you know, having a 10-1 season like you did last year. You're just so excited about that. But uh, little brother. That's a nice attitude of arrogance you got there. I can't quite get on board. Uh, they beat us two out of three, uh, despite the fact the seven overtime game was was ridiculous uh, and lucky. They were lucky to win the game. Um, but it is a rivalry. They're in here recruiting. They've got a good coach. They're outperforming us the last two years significantly, and we got work to do. I'd like to start some of it on Saturday, but I just understanding where you're coming from there is really the root of my dislike for them, which has grown exponentially over the last few years. Um, and a lot of it comes from TexAggers.com, which covers Texas A&M the exact same way that I cover LSU. I'm aware of that. I'm not, I don't lack self-awareness, but I hate them. And so I hate their coverage of it and always painting everything positive and always giving A&M the benefit of the doubt. It's what they're paid to do. And I do the same thing here, but I don't like it. And it's in my Twitter mentions all the time, not mentions on my Twitter feed all the time. And my point is, I'd like to think of myself as on the level with Alabama and Florida and Clemson, put Georgia in there, even though they hadn't won one Ohio State. I think of my school there because we've got the three national championships in the last 20 years. We've played for four. We've won SEC conference titles, have had the most guys in the NFL for a long stretch there. And I like to think of myself on that perch, and I don't want A&M joining me up there. Now, whether or not we're on that perch is up for anybody to debate. I would argue that LSU is a blue-blood college football program at this point that has fallen on a couple of really bad years, and they're going to have to reverse it with this new hire. But I don't, ha- I don't have any room for more up there. The same way I felt when Mississippi State was playing in the College Baseball National Championship Series, didn't want them to win. I wanted Vanderbilt to win another one because I don't want Mississippi State joining the ranks. I don't have room for anybody else in the ranks. I want to pat them on the head, and I want them to be submissive and little brother. But the fact of the matter is that they've got the ability – to not be, and I see that. You and Hester like to say they hadn't ever won anything. They're not really a threat. They're little brother. They just celebrate, you know, ten wins, all that kind of stuff. But they have the Ole Miss can't do it. Ole Miss can't do it. Arkansas cannot do it. A and M can, and I don't want them to do it. So I have to actively root against them every single Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, uh, especially with with A and M, it, it's, uh, and I think we we're talking in the Body Four chat. We had a great conversation about this, and I think the reason why you see so much turnover with the head coaches here, the reason why you know there's so much pressure here, is because you have the championships, it's because you win the SEC, it's because you are top the SEC West time and time again. And them, that's not the case, man. The standard is different, man. You, you, you. The next head coach is going to be expected to win a championship here. I don't know if uh, Jimbo has that pressure. I think. Oh I, yes, he does. I don't oh, know, man. Yeah. Honestly, I'll be real with you right you, now. I'll be real. I think if Jimbo continues to beat Alabama, I think that will be fine. I don't think he has to win. If they beat Alabama time and time again, maybe three out of four, maybe you know four if out of five. If you think they can beat Alabama three out of four years and somehow fall flat and go eight and four on those seasons, I think you're, you're losing it. No, I'm not losing it. They're about to have four losses this year. They did it this I, year. It's possible, but they're not going to sustain a program that's good enough to beat Alabama three out of four, but they can't beat the Mississippi schools I don't year know, in, man. year out. I don't know. I, I, there's something about A&M, man. There, there's something very little brother about them. Look, you, you wanted to come to the SEC. You wanted to come play with the big boys you got to get it done man like i say there's a difference between the haves and the half not a and m you just happen to be one of the have nots you're not going to atlanta you're not going to the playoff what are we talking about how is this they're, even a they're, conversation they're a have not in terms of what they've accomplished they're not a have not in terms of potential i mean we can do potential all day okay, let's do so it. Many, look I, I see a bunch of potential over at tennessee man i love what hype was doing with the place you see what they do against alabama Tennessee, for three you quarters see more potential in tennessee or college station Obviously, right now, it's easier to say that. Give Hype a little couple years. Let's see what he's cooking with. There's potential a bunch of places. The difference between potential to me and getting over the top is simply that. Those are the coaches who get paid $10, $12 million a year. And those are coaches who, you know, almost get there. And I think A&M is just the almost. They're just, to me, they're almost. You got to show me. You got to do it. Well, they have to do it. But I'm, what I'm saying is I understand and recognize they could. That's the scary part. If they get it right, they could. That's in this sport. 
that's not always – there just aren't that many t- teams that can do it. Purdue, never going to do it. Minnesota, never going to do it. Cal, never going to do it. A&M, could. It's possible. Same thing. Arkansas, never going to do it. Ole Miss, never going to do it. South Carolina, no. A&M could do it. Possibly. Only only thing that could possibly do it is the, the recruiting that Jimbo is doing. Um, you, obviously, you, you trot out some of those guys out there. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before they get over the hump. If he can continue to put these recruiting classes, obviously they got the money to back it. But look, man, we're about to get a head coach over here. It's only going to get harder for those boys. And you got to see Alabama. We see what uh, Pittman's doing at Arkansas. It's not about to get any easier for AM. and So that's that's my that's my case. See, that's where I, you lose me with like, well, you see what Pittman's doing at Arkansas, and then you totally dismiss A&M. Yeah. Like, how do you – how could you rectify – like, A&M's the got same. way more – they're not the same. They're the same. They're little brother. Like, what, A&M how are they not is putting the, together top five recruiting classes year after year. This is the second year in a row they've done it. Arkansas yep. is not in the top 20. And then how many times have they been in Atlanta with that? They, they're just getting them. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see That's how not, it plays out. The argument out. is we'll not see. whether they can or can't do it. The, the argument is not whether they have done it. It's whether they can or not. I think it's gonna be very tough for them to do it. I, that's my point, and I'm gonna stick to that. I, I don't, I don't see them doing. It. Obviously, they, they, it's possible, but I just don't see it, man. I don't see the Big Twelve former school coming to the SEC and getting it done, taking down Nick, slaying the giant, going to Atlanta, beating Kirby, knocking him down, going to the college football playoff, going to get that done too. It's a lot to swallow, man. I don't know if Andem's ready for all that. Well, they're not right now. They're certainly yeah. not right now, and not with Zach Calzada playing quarterback. But <laughs> Nick's not gonna be there forever. I'm hoping. And, you know, that's t- to, to give them the standard of, okay, so here's the question. Here's your question for you. Let's, let's continue on this. Who's the second best program in the SEC, right? In the SEC West right now. Second best in the SEC West of this year. No, in terms of how, what the, the oh, shape the program is in right like now. Blue blood, blue blood. Um, man, I got to do Homer bias right now, man. You know, I'm going to say LSU. You know, we went five and five last year and we're going to potentially go four and six this year. Yeah, of course, of course. I, well, I would how, def- that, how would that put us anywhere close because, to being? Okay, like I said, that's that's why I separate the haves and the half-nots. When you're LSU, you have the blue blood, you have the program, you have the championships, you have the chips with the dips. When you're a recruit, that means something. Why would I Why would I take a chance of somewhere that possibly can go where, where I can go somewhere where it's proven? They've done it. We've seen three different coaches go there and do it. What's to say the fourth one can't? I think for me, I think LSU's right there just because you got the chips with the dip. No, A and M is clearly in better shape than LSU right now. LSU yeah. can change that in twelve months, but right now, with the classes they brought in, with the stability A and M's got, and the two seasons they put together compared to LSU's two seasons since Joe Burrow left the field, it's not even close. Yeah. We're about to have a bunch of guys enter the transfer portal. You, you've got to hire a staff. Like it's right now, I don't even think it's debatable. I, as I say, it can it can change pretty quick, but right now, A and M is the second healthiest program in the West. Okay, yeah, I don't know if you answer exit that way the first time. Healthy. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah, in well, terms of the state of the program. Okay, well, yes, obviously, yeah. If you say that, I mean, the, if you see what we've been down, I mean, we don't have to go down the long list of stuff we've been dealing with as yeah, a program, no like as of late. So yeah, I, if you put it that way, yeah, I could probably agree with that. I mean, yeah, I could probably point to a bunch of other schools right now. I, I, I would like what they're doing at Ole Miss right now, as far as healthy wise. If you look at what they're doing, so. But I think the potential and, and then what you've done o- over time, I think it still matters. That's why I think this job is one of the best jobs in the country. And if you get someone over here, I think I think you're right there with them, man. I don't think it's some, a lot. Of, I, I agree keep, with that. I keep hearing people saying, man, this is a three-year rebuild. This is a four-year yeah. rebuild. I, I don't think that. I don't think I think you're so far off. I think if you can, there's still so much talent. Obviously, you haven't seen that talent. A lot of them have been in the training room, but there's still a lot of talent on this roster. I think it's you're going to be right there in contention if you can get someone in here who knows what they're doing. Brady Holsey said, never disagreed more with Hunt. A&M will not be relevant in two years. That's a bold statement to make when in two years they're going to have two or three top five signing classes in their locker room. I don't know how you could climb to relevance okay, here. any, I got a point any for more right here. practically than that. I got a point for you here. Obviously, it's a program where we are now. We had the number two uh, rated recruiting class last year in the SEC. Alabama number one, we were number mm-hmm. two. Well, how that do for us this year? Did not. It's not everything. I mean, it has a great part to do with it, but you got to know how to use that time. You got to know how to put it out there. You got to know, you know, how to keep those guys healthy for one, too. Uh, it's not the end all be all. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're putting some recruiting class together in them, but you got to go out there and get it done. 
That's for sure. And I would look. I would be thrilled if uh, if LSU went out there and beat them and knocked them down a peg, and they went to they would finish the year eight and four, and maybe could go lose a bowl game. And that's asking a lot. But eight and five, that would look pretty ugly. But the fact of the matter is, the recruiting class would probably still you know be committed and show up with Jimbo, and you know that's that'll immediately turn A and M and flip and go. Oh well, yeah, we lost our starting quarterback and finished poorly. But you know what? We've got these these signing coming. I, I, look, I'm pulling against them harder than anybody. But it's because I think I realize that they could be a threat. And so I'm not, I'm not worried about Sam Pittman's doing it at Arkansas. That's never going to be a factor. I'm not worried at all about what Mike Leach is doing in Mississippi State. They've won some nice games. They're competitive. They've played a solid brand of football. Are they ever a threat under him to go 11-1 and and contend for the West? No, they're not ever. A&M poses that threat. That's really the point I'm going to make. So I think... I don't disagree with everything you're saying. I think we just have. I I think I'm just looking. I'm betting on a little bit of potential there. And you're saying, look, they've never done it. I'm not going to buy it until, until they've cashed the check. Yep, that's why where I'm at with it. They got to show me, man. It's look. It's that's why that that people say this job or LSU. You might want to take the Florida job because you got Alabama to you know to the yeah. to the east side. You got A and M over to the left. That's what makes the job tough. But I also think that's why it's so tough for A and M. You're gonna have to. You know, deal deal with a rebuilt LSU team with a new coach. Obviously, Nick's, Nick's not going anywhere, and we've seen them uh, fall up short this year to teams that they have no business losing to. So, we'll see, Jimbo. We will see.